Hey, Dustin Van Roy here. In this video, I want to show you how we take Azure Databricks logs and metrics and have those go to Log Analytics for us. So Log Analytics is a, a way for, for querying logs and setting up alerts on logs in Azure. Uh, it's something that's really uh, a good way to work with your logs and you could be using this across a whole lot of different you know, applications and services, not just Azure Databricks. But of course, I will focus on the Databricks side for you. This will involve downloading a uh, open source project, building that with Maven, and then you know getting it up to your cluster and running some init scripts. And so I'll walk you through that. If you have questions on it, just reach out to me and I'll do my best to help you through comments. And then the thing we'll show you at the end though that I want you to also check out is if you're using PySpark, how do you do custom logs that go to the same Log4j logger so that they'll show up for you? And so I'll show you that little tip too. So let's dive right in. The libraries we're going to install and the init script we'll use comes from this Spark Monitoring repository, which is all part of the Microsoft Patterns and Practices GitHub organization. I've actually forked this and created a few changes that I'll use today. So you could always come look at this data kickstart Spark Monitoring, which is my fork of this. And if you want to see what I did differently, besides what I call out in this video, you can just take a look at the history and uh, see the different commits I did. It's basically just some helper scripts and I've added the jars for you. So if you feel comfortable with it, if you choose to just set up the jars from my repository, you could go and get the last build I did, which is meant to be for uh, law version 3.1.1, and you could use these if you prefer. Now, in your organization, security team may not like this, that's fine. Go ahead and follow these steps to build it on your own and make sure you're getting this from source if you want to make sure that you've got complete control of the solution. So to clone this, you'd either choose SSH or HTTPS, whichever mode you prefer. Switch over to your terminal and type git clone and paste that path. Uh, as long as you're authenticated, it should work for you. If you're using HTTPS, it might prompt you for your username and password. Just go ahead and fill that in. Once you have that repository, you'll want to jump into the correct directory. And then you need to build. There's a script that comes with it that doesn't quite work on my Mac. So I've created a Mac build script that I can run. Uh, which you could run just by doing Mac build SSH. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's in there so that everyone's aware of what you're doing. So it's really a simple command. This is MVN is for Maven. If you don't have Maven yet, you would need to install it. So here I can do the build. I can, I can set the profile. I can tell it to skip test and I just kick that off. And Maven's gonna do a little bit of work here. I'll fast forward till it's all done. Okay, I can see that it was successful and it created some jars. Those jars should exist in a path that is source target. Uh, and there you go. I've got two jar files that I'll end up using on Databricks. So let me walk through what I did differently in the init script. Uh, basically what I've done is set a few different variables to be set from environment variables. And if the environment variables are blank, then the variables in the script will just be blank. So it doesn't hurt if you don't fill all of these in. But ultimately we're trying to get to where the workspace ID and workspace key are set. And so I'm gonna walk you through how we set those in Databricks configuration. This changed the init script that's in my branch. It will show you how to make sure that the init script is looking for those environment variables will set. Then this section here, I don't actually use myself, but I went ahead and set these to be looking for environment variables. So if I ever find in the future that I need to make use of these in the header, I can go ahead and set those in the same way, I'll set my workspace key and workspace ID. With that, let's go actually add these to our Databricks cluster. So the next step will be to upload files. And I use the Databricks CLI, the DBFS command for this. So let me show you what these commands are very quickly. So in upload with DBFS, what it's actually doing is using the Databricks CLI or the DBFS command to make a directory for these files, upload the two jar files, and then run the init script, the spark monitoring.sh, which is what actually does the kind of install initialization on the cluster. So you can set this up for every cluster. You want to have the integration of log4j and spark listeners to log analytics. First, I'll show you if you run this and you don't have Databricks command line installed and configured, you'll see an error, something like this. And the way I fix that is I actually have a virtual environment that already has it installed. I'll switch over to that. If you don't, then you'll just need to do like pip install Databricks CLI and then Databricks configure in order to get that set up for your environment for the first time. This is a pretty simple script. So when it runs, there's no output. Uh, I just double check that it's there by doing DBFS. 
ls and then the actual path. And that shows me that these three files exist in the location I was trying to upload to. So I should be good to continue to the next steps. The next step is to create a log analytics workspace. So I have one already, but let me show you very quickly how we would create a new one. We need to go to log analytics, choose create, choose a resource group. I'll just pick one, choose a name and create. And keep in mind that there is a cost as you, as you use this. So uh, do not actually create this unless you are ready to pay for whatever you send to log analytic. Once it's created, you would go to the resource and we need to get a few pieces of information in order to set this up. We'll need the workspace ID, which you can just get from the home screen if you choose. We also need a secret and we can go to agents management and copy one of these keys as our secret. And that is what we'll use for the second parameter I'll show you. So with our workspace ID and one of the keys from here, we'll go set some key vault values that will then map into our Databricks environment variables. So I'm gonna assume you know how to get those into key vault and you've got a key vault secret scope set up with your Databricks cluster. Uh, an alternative, if you do not have key vault secret scopes, and this is really a test dev environment where you're willing to take a little security risk by hard coding this, is you could do this next step, but hard code the values in the environment variables for the Databricks cluster. Or you could go back and follow the instructions on that repository that say, hey, go ahead and just take those values and paste them into sparkmonitoring.sh file and use that in the init script with those hard-coded values. I'm going to use a Databricks secret scope which has these correct values in it and I'll set my environment variables from there. So the way I set my, the way I set my environment variables from secret values is I go into edit mode, go to the environment variable section, and I'll paste in the values that matter. So I have the log analytics workspace key is an environment variable that I have set up in my spark monitoring.sh. Log analytics workspace ID is another environment variable. And I'm getting those from a secret scope called demo. And with the secret name of log analytics workspace key and log analytics workspace ID. So to tie that together, if I go look in the key vault that I've uh, set up as a secret scope, I can see that I have a log analytics workspace ID and a log analytics workspace key. And in this case, the way I set that is I just came in here, created a new version and populated the value with what I copied from that log analytics page. And then the other setup on the cluster we need to do is add an init script. We have put spark monitoring.sh into this location and I can just choose add. And from there, I'm ready to confirm and start up my cluster. So my cluster started up successfully. I can look in the event log to make sure that everything went fine. Uh, at times when I'm doing this, if I mess something up, I'll see this uh, init script failure issue. And sometimes that's because I haven't set my environment variables correctly. Uh, other times something's going on with spark monitoring.sh that isn't quite right for my cluster. Uh, hopefully you don't hit that. If so, leave a comment. And I'll see if I can help you debug it. So now we get to go see what is actually happening in log analytics. So I've mentioned this once. I'll call it out another time before we look at it. This log4j output is going to get sent to log analytics as well as the underlying metrics that the Ganglia UI exposed for us. So these will um, these are available here and it's kind of a set format. It's okay. <laughs> I use it. I get some value out of it but I like to be able to kind of hone in a little bit differently and see things past the, the time the cluster terminates and past the time I delete a cluster. And that's where log analytics really helps out. From Azure portal, find your log analytics workspace. In this case, I think I still mapped everything to Databricks log analytics. And once you find that, go ahead and choose the logs option. It has some built-in queries. I don't really start here. I'll show you a query I like to use in a moment. Collapse some of this stuff to get out of the way. Actually, that one's pretty handy the first time. So there's going to be some logs. You might see more than this uh, depending on your environment setup, but custom logs is where our new stuff's going to go. So we have the Spark Listener, Spark Logging, and Spark Metric. Spark Logging's really, really where I spend my time. Let's go take a look at what's in this table. If I double click, it'll populate that for me and we'll start with a very open-ended query. So just looking at some of the top results here, I kind of have to scroll to the right to get to the important stuff. I have message and logger name, which kind of lets me see where these logs are coming from. And then the log level. So error would be something I'd kind of keep an eye out for in the log level. 
And these are really kind of default spark logs. So not a lot of these are going to be useful for me, but uh, it's good to have them there. It's good to search for certain things that can go wrong, but I'm not gonna sit there and get a lot of value out of seeing these, these logs that come when Spark really isn't processing any data. Let's clean up the output and then we'll go run a job and see what we get. So I've added a project clause, which is basically like a select, which columns do I really care about? Reorders them a little bit to where I feel like I'm seeing what I care about closer to the front. Uh, and now for running a job and seeing the output of that job. So I have just a basic notebook here. And the thing I'm gonna do a little differently is I'm using PySpark. And so I'm going to actually go and grab the the log4j logger that exists and start to use that from PySpark. So this first command that I'm running is what gets that logger and lets me use it. And then we'll send just a basic test message. Let's make sure that's there and then we can run Spark code and see if some other things show up for us. Okay, so with that refresh, I can see the second item is my test message that I sent. Let me go ahead and kick off that, that notebook. Okay, so that is running and wrote the data. So after running my sample notebook, I can actually see some information that applies to the Spark code I was running. Uh, the write job committed is telling me that it finished writing, and then it shows me some of the paths that I was writing data to. So if I clear this out and pull in my Spark metric log, you'll end up seeing quite a bit of information in here. The, the main thing you'll care about is that there's a variety of values depending on the metric type, and then the name here is the metric name. And so you'll usually hone in on one or two metrics at a time and then compare via time series. Here's what things like my major GC count and my JVM heat memory, here's how they've been changing over time. And so I take that value, uh, line it up, you know, with the timestamp on a chart or something and make some sense of it from there. So if I filter down to this metric name and wanted to export this and use like Power BI with it, I can go to my export options. Obviously we have a few things like CSV, uh, if you click on export to Power BI, it's going to download a file that also has instructions of importing that as a data source within Power BI. So now we've got our log4j logs, we've got our Spark metrics, we've seen how we can get PySpark to speak to it, and we set up the init script. And so any cluster you wanna run this on, you can just add that init script and you should be good to go. You'll start to get these logs flowing and you can filter by cluster as well if you need to kind of separate the different workloads when you're running your queries. So that's how we set up Azure Databricks to go to Log Analytics, how we query it, how we do PySpark logging with our own custom messages. I hope you found this tip helpful. Like I said, reach out if you need any help from me as you go about this, and I'll see you next time.